Nature has the ability to produce creatures with a wider assortment of behaviors, skills, and abilities. It is the goal of researchers in artificial intelligence to produce agents that can navigate in their environment as gracefully as natural organisms. One of the tools at our disposal in this quest are objective-based evolutionary algorithms. Their main strategy is to move towards an objective defined by the experimenter. The strength of this algorithm is that it often outperforms human engineers. One weakness is that it gets stuck in local optima. To counter local optima, a type of evolutionary algorithm, novelty search, was created. The main strategy of novelty search is to ignore the objective during evolution and encourage behavioral diversity. Because of this strategy, novelty search is able to avoid local optima. One weakness of this strategy is that many researchers see it as a random search. In this video, we will see evidence that this criticism is unfounded. To demonstrate what we mean by local optima, we're going to evolve a simulated robot to solve the maze on the right. This is the maze used in the original novice search experiment and is known as the hard maze. The robot is controlled by an artificial neural network. We're going to place the robot in the maze at the red star location. What we want is for the evolutionary algorithm to evolve the artificial neural network to get the robot from the red star location all the way to the objective or goal in green. But this is much harder than it seems. Now, as I said before, the objective-based EA is solely concerned with moving towards the objective. But as we can see, that's not really the best approach. We can try doing this a couple more times, and while each attempt is slightly different, they all wind up getting stuck in the dead end. Obviously, this approach won't work. These robots will just keep pushing forward, but they'll never get through that wall. Really, the robots should backtrack a little, but that requires moving away from the objective, something they won't do. Now, how would novelty search solve this problem? We have the same setup, but the novelty search robots are going to do things a little bit differently. The blue robots are allowed to run in the maze and are rewarded for how different their final X and Y positions are from previous robots. By always doing something different, the robots wind up exploring the whole maze and find the objective. Once the robot finds the objective, the search stops. Oh, I found the goal. While the novelty search robots do find the goal, some researchers are a bit doubtful concerning how the task was solved. That doesn't count. You wandered around till you came across the objective. It's like you're just doing a random search. While this is a valid concern, supporters of novelty search disagree. We're not random search. We're building exploratory skills. That's how we are continuously novel, and we can prove it. If the novelty search supporters claim that these robots possess exploratory skills, let's touch for that. We're going to rerun the knowledge search experiment until we find a successful robot. We're then going to grab that robot and put them into a new maze, here called the large maze. Now here's the path of a single knowledge search robot. It looks like it's able to navigate from the start location pretty well. Here's a path of 50 different knowledge search robots. All of these robots look to be able to explore pretty well. To quantify this, we're going to use two metrics. For our first metric, area covered, we're going to treat the maze visualization as an image and find a percent of black pixels to overall pixels. A plot of the median percent area covered is shown in the lower left. For the second metric, distance traveled, we're going to look at the distance each robot travels from the start location. Each robot starts at the center of the maze. It runs its course and has some end position. The distance of the path between these two points is what we will use for this measure. In order to form a comparison across our metrics, we're going to use three controls. For the first control, shown in green, we're going to use robots controlled by random artificial neural networks. This is the naive control. The second control in yellow are robots controlled by random artificial neural networks that have the same number of connections and nodes as the knowledge search robots. This is the network complexity control, or NCC. The last control in red are robots that have evolved to solve the original maze with a traditional objective-based EA. This is the fitness control. Now the box plot on the lower left shows the percent area covered for all four treatments. We can see that novelty search covers a larger area when compared to naive and NCC, which are the random controls. This difference is significant as indicated by the crossbars above the box plot. We can also see that novelty search travels the same amount as traditional objective-based EA. Now if you look at this as metric in the lower right, we can see that novelty search travels further than naive and travels further than NCC. We can also see that knowledge search travels the same amount as a traditional objective-based TA. Now, if we allow these treatments to evolve on the large maze and track the area covered over time, we get the plot on the lower left. Now, knowledge search is in blue, but it's difficult to see because it's being obscured by fitness in red, indicating that the two treatments cover about the same area over the course of evolution. This is very interesting because knowledge search 
an algorithm that has been criticized for being like a random search, is covering the same percent area as its traditional objective-based EA, which is the standard in AI. Now, both knowledge search and fitness are outperforming naive in green and NCC in yellow. The stars at the bottom of the plot indicate that for a given generation of control, so naive in green and NCC in yellow, is significantly different when compared to knowledge search. And as no surprise, since knowledge search and fitness lines are right on top of each other, we don't see any red stars, indicating there is no significant difference between the two treatments. Now, if we look at the distance traveled over the course of evolution, we see a very similar trend. Knowledge search travels further than naive in NCC, but the difference is only significant for the first few generations. We can also see that for the most part, knowledge search and fitness, as indicated by the stars, are not very significantly different. Aside from looking at general exploratory skills, we can see how knowledge search and the different controls do at readapting to new challenges. Remember that in the original hard maze, Knowledge Search and Fitness had to travel from the start location in red to the goal location in green. We can do the same thing in a large maze. We can have robots start in the center and record the number of evaluations it takes to get to different goal locations within the large maze. Now let's see what we get when we plot those results. Notice on the x-axis we have the different goal locations for the large maze. On the y-axis we have the median number of evaluations to find a location. Here is Knowledge Search in blue. The points in the solid line represent the median number of valuations, and the shaded borders are the 25th and 75th percentile. Let's add naive in green and NCC in yellow. For these plots, lower is better, so knowledge search is taking less time to find the different goal locations. As we saw previously, the stars at the bottom of the plot indicate significant difference, and in this case, show that knowledge search is significantly faster than naive and NCC for a majority of the locations. Now if we add the fitness line in red, we can see that it mirrors the Navi line in blue. And again, as indicated by the lack of red significant stars, these treatments are pretty much the same. In summary, Navi search is not a random process because it's building exploratory skills. And even though Navi search was criticized for being a random search, it's on par with a traditional objective-based EA in terms of the transferability of exploratory skills and the adaptation to new challenges. For full details, please see the Gecko paper titled Novi Search Creates Robots with General Skills for Exploration by Velez and Kloon. I would like to thank my advisor, Professor Jeff Kloon, as well as members of the Evolving AI Lab for their advice and support, as well as all of you for watching.